All right, the next topic that I would like to touch upon is called function overloading. And the idea is that um, functions have a very special property, which is very nice, which is the fact that you can actually write several functions as opposed to variables, for example, which have to be unique and you cannot repeat their names. When it comes to functions, you can actually write several functions with the exact same name so long as the argument number or the argument types are different, uh, aka so long as the signature of the function is different. And let me explain why would we want to do that. So for example, let's go back to the simple example where we were adding two numbers, right? I just created this console application that has three variables for three independent numbers, and then it has another variable for an array of numbers, of integers, for example. And um, I'm not sure if we have seen this in the, the series, but this notation, especially this part, is creating an array on the fly with five empty slots, and it's populating that those five empty slots right away with values. Okay, so this is like a, like an inline um, assignment. I, I forget how that is named, but basically, I just initialize the array with those five values as opposed to using a for loop to like you create and you know where I'm going with this. Okay. And then here I have a variable, which is going to be the addition of A and B. Now, let's say that I wanted to create functions that were able to add two numbers, but also three numbers or four numbers, or I don't know, or any, um, or even an array of numbers. Okay. If function names had to be unique, it would be a little tedious because then I would have to rename this addition to values. And then the next function, the one that adds three values would have to be called addition three values. And the one that adds all the values in an array would have to be called addition array or something like that. So it's not very clean. Uh, and because C sharp is strongly typed, it's and because it knows the types of things that are coming in, then I actually have the advantage that because the compiler is smart enough to know what variables are going in, the variable, this compiler will be able to choose which one is the right function to call. So what that means is that I can actually create several functions with the same name, so long as either the number of arguments or their types are different between each other. And therefore, I could use the addition function for two values or three values or an array of values. The way that looks is like this. Let's say that I wanted to create a second version of the function, the addition function that takes in three numbers. The way I, ha I have to do that is very simple. What I do here is I say I static double addition and then I say double, uh, double a, double b. And if I left it like this, um, and I, I'm going to copy this here. If I left it like this, you would see that this is complaining because the program already finds a member called addition with the same parameter types, with the same amount of arguments and their types. So a solution would be, well, I'm just going to change how many arguments my function takes. So I'm going to add a third parameter, which is going to be called C, for example, and I'm going to use that here in the computation. And remember that the fact that these are called A, B, and C, and these are called A, B or A, B, and C is absolutely uh, a coincidence. It's actually, I should have actually named it different to avoid confusion. They do not have to be called the same. But now you can see that I have a, now I don't have a name conflict. I have a variable, a function that takes two numbers, a function that takes three numbers. And as I type, for example, some A, B, and C, if you start typing addition, you can see that I have something very interesting now. It tells me that the function has two different overloads. So for example, here, and you can see that I have a version that takes two arguments and I have another version that takes three arguments. The IntelliSense is already completing this here. So I can say now this A, B, and C, and then the result is going to be um, the addition of those three. Similarly, I could write here static double addition. And then if I wanted to create a overload that takes an array 
of numbers and add them add them together then the only thing i will need to say is like i will need to add here a parameter called values for example but remember that i need to specify that this is not one single number this is an array of numbers and therefore here i could write some code to put those together so for example uh, i'm going to copy paste it i'm actually i'm going to do it so i would create an empty variable with an empty initial value called zero and then i'm going to with a for loop i'm going to iterate over all the values in the array so values dot length i plus plus and then sum to the value of sum i'm going to add each one of the values one at a time and then the return type of this the return value is going to be the sum of all of those and now here i can just say sum double sum array it's going to be equal to the addition and now i have three overloads right so i have the array of values two numbers or three numbers and then here i would say i want to add all the nums and let me see if i can print this to the console so sum a and b right oops nope <laughs> let me copy and paste this a b and c a b and c and the array and if i print this you can see that oh it's giving me 12 is giving me 24 and it's giving me 30 which is the addition of all this stuff here okay so overloads are very very useful um overloads are very very useful because they give us the possibility of um of creating four of creating of creating similar functions that have the similar names but they take different kinds of arguments and this is usually a really good practice because it gives people who are using this functionality flexibility to choose which inputs uh, they want to use okay this is a very very common technique used in computer programming let's take a look at more function features